Hello, this is Ms. Moore, and today during chemistry, we're going to discuss intermolecular forces. So today's essential question, how do IMFs, intermolecular forces, influence the behavior of a substance? Let's start with a quick graphic overview of bonding types. So on the left here, we have what we call intramolecular forces. Okay, so that's what we've been talking about. You're just your basic bonds ionic covalent, um, and as a review, ionic bonds are the stronger of the two bonds, right? They're very strong, they have very high melting points, boiling points, etc. Okay, and then we have covalent bonds. Covalent bonds are weaker than ionic bonds with lower melting and boiling points. Okay. Um, in general, however, I should say that um, intramolecular forces in general are stronger bond types than intermolecular. Okay. So intermolecular um, bonds um, are forces, and there are three types that we'll be talking about. We'll be talking about London dispersion forces, which are the weakest of the types of IMFs. We have dipole, dipole forces and hydrogen bonding, which is an IMF, not a true bond. And of the IMFs, hydrogen bonding is the strongest, but still weaker than, um, than the intramolecular forces. Intramolecular forces are between, are between atoms. Okay, they're between atoms. It's what we use to make molecules or compounds. Intermolecular forces are forces between, between molecules or between molecules and atoms. Okay, so it's what holds various molecules together to make a substance. So as an example, um, let's take an individual water molecule. So you know that water is made up of two hydrogens and an oxygen. And those hydrogens and are held together to the oxygen with an intramolecular force, in this case, a covalent bond. Um, but you don't ever see just one water molecule floating around. Um, what you'll see is many water molecules. So we may have another water molecule. Let's try that again. Another water molecule floating around here, hooked together with our intramolecular bonds. But these water molecules can also be hooked together. And that dotted line right there is our IMF. Okay, that doesn't work. That dotted line is our IMF. In particular, it is a hydrogen bond. And a whole bunch of water molecules put together is what we see as liquid water, solid ice, whatever. Okay, so each molecule is bonded together with an intramolecular force. And the two molecules are held together here with an intermolecular force. Okay, that's it for a quick overview of inter and intramolecular forces and the difference between them. Let's now focus on IMFs or 
intermolecular forces. So what is an intermolecular force? An intermolecular force, also known as an IMF, is a relatively weak interaction between, between molecules or between molecules and atoms. And the types of IMFs between different molecules of a substance is actually what determines the properties of the substance. So for example, it will determine the state of matter at, let's say, room temperature. Um, it will determine the melting and boiling points of a certain substance. Different IMFs, substances with different IMFs are going to have different melting and boiling points. So it isn't the bond itself that necessarily determines the melting and boiling points when we're talking about covalent bonds, but the IMFs that hold the molecules together. Um, the, I, the type of IMF can also determine the type of surface tension, viscosity, etc. The greater the strength of the intermolecular forces in a substance, the higher the melting and boiling points. So substances that contain stronger IMFs will have higher melting and boiling points. They will have higher surface tensions and higher viscosity. Um, the more likely the substance will be found in the solid state. Um, solid, solids have, have stronger IMFs than liquids and um, gases have almost non-existent, almost, you've got that, almost non-existent IMFs. Um, and the less likely the, the substance will be found as a gaseous state. When a substance changes state, um, remember changing state means like going from solid to liquid, liquid to gas, gas to solid, salt, gas to liquid, whatever. What actually is changing is the intermolecular forces. You're breaking or weakening some of those intermolecular forces to go from a solid to a liquid and a liquid to a gas. Because again, remember, a solid is going to have stronger IMFs than a liquid and a liquid stronger than a gas. Okay, so to change state, you have to change the intermolecular forces. The bonds or the intramolecular forces holding the atoms together that make up the molecules do not change um, when you're changing state. So think about water again, um, our H2O. So we had H, H, and here's our intramolecular forces. And then we can do another one here. Um, Oh, that's supposed to be in blue, sorry. Uh, here's our intermolecular force. So here, here's our intermolecular force and our intramolecular force. So when this little bit of water changes from a solid water to liquid water, what changes is the dotted line here, okay? The intermolecular force changes. The blue lines, the intramolecular force stays the same. Okay, um, so quick list of the types of intermolecular forces we'll be talking about. Um, London dispersion forces, by the way, that can also be known as just dispersion forces. So London dispersion forces or dispersion forces, or actually it could be called London forces as well. Okay, so, sorry, London dispersion forces. We could have dipole-dipole forces, and we could have hydrogen bonds, and I truly hate the word bond because that makes us think of intramolecular forces. It's not really a bond, it's an IMF. Um, okay, so we're gonna spend the rest of the lecture kind of going on an overview of London dispersion forces versus dipole-dipole versus hydrogen bonds. And the first one we'll talk about is London dispersion forces. So London dispersion forces are actually small 
electrostatic forces that are caused by movement of electrons within the covalent bonds of molecules. So um, just to give you kind of a picture, as two, as, as two molecules are moving near each other, the, the electrons, the sea of electrons surrounding the, the different atoms and the molecules will kind of move a little bit. And you'll end up with this temporary dipole with a partial positive, a partial negative. Um, not like a real dipole, just a temporary one, which is going to cause a slight attraction. Okay. And dis dispersion forces exist between all atoms and molecules. Okay, you're always going to find London dispersion forces. Um, the larger the atom and the larger the molecules are going to have greater surface area, which means more places for these London dispersion forces to take place. So um, you're going to end up with a stronger dispersion force. Okay, so um, if you think about that, like the halogen, something bonded to a fluorine is actually going to have a weaker London dispersion force than something bonded to, say, um, iodine, okay, because, because of the larger surface area. Um, all that being said, the London dispersion forces are the weakest of the IMFs. And our next IMF is called dipole-dipole forces. So when do dipole-dipole forces take place? Well, they can be found between molecules that have a permanent dipole. Now, you got to think back a minute, because what we're talking about is between polar molecules. Okay, so not necessarily mo molecules that have polar bonds, but molecules themselves that are polar. So remember that, polar molecules. So what's happening is that the positive portion of one molecule will be attracted to the negative end of another molecule. And that is what the dipole-dipole force is. You can think of it as like a mini ionic bond, right? Where you have a positive and a negative and, and they're attracted. But being that it's a bi dipole, it's only partially positive and partially negative. Um, you're going to have, you know, a weaker, much weaker than an ionic bond, but it's the same idea. Um, Dipole-dipole forces are stronger than London dispersion forces, which means that substances containing molecules with dipole-dipole forces will have a higher melting and boiling points, higher viscosity, all of that kind of stuff, than substances with only dispersion forces. And the last IMF we're going to discuss is the hydrogen bond. So again, hydrogen bonds are not bonds or not intramolecular forces, okay? But they are intermolecular forces or IMFs between molecules, not intramolecular forces between atoms. So when do hydrogen bonds occur? They're, they're the most specific type of IMF. They only occur between molecules that contain an H bonded with either an F, N, or an O. So hydrogen, so why, why, I'm going to explain why this is the case. Hydrogen is relatively weak, right? Very, very low electronegativity. And when bonded one of, the, one of these really strong atoms with a high electronegativity, the bond is incredibly polar. And thus the hydrogen end of the molecule has a very strong positive dipole and the F, N, or O end has a very strong negative dipole. So you end up with a pretty strong attraction um, when the hydrogen from one molecule is attracted to the F, N, or O from a second molecule, forming a relatively strong IMF, the hydrogen bond. Um, and hydrogen bonds are the strongest of the IMFs by a long shot. So substances containing hydrogen bonds have really high melting and boiling points. Okay, again, not as high as an ionic bond, but still um, quite a bit higher than any other mo molecule containing um, covalent bonds and really high viscosity. And um, 
a very special case of hydrogen bonds of the one I keep drawing is the water, right? Water has, okay, so we have, this is going to be a partial positive bond here, right? Partial positive dipole, right? Sorry, partial negative. And when we have another water molecule, which is also partially positive, partially negative, partially positive, there's going to be a very strong attraction. So this right here is our hydrogen bond. And it's this hydrogen bond that really defines why water has an incredibly high boiling point compared to other substances made from covalently bonded molecules. Um, DNA, another example, lots of hydrogen bonds in DNA. And um, so there you go. There is our discussion on IMFs. So mostly when we're talking about IMFs, so let's, let's do a really quick overview. When we're talking about IMFs, we're usually talking about things with covalent bonds, which in general are weaker bonds than ionic bonds. And um, the weakest of the IMFs is the dispersion. And the strongest is going to be the hydrogen bond. So things with hydrogen bonds are going to have pretty high boiling points and melting points, more likely to be found in a solid state at lower temperatures, more difficult to get to the gaseous state. Things with weaker bonds, COVID IMFs, like, like dispersion, the ones that have dispersion forces are going to be more likely to be found in the liquid or gas state at room temperature, um, much, much lower melting and boiling points. All right, folks, that's it for today. Have a good one.